we move ahead to look at how to enter data into a spreadsheet. The cell in which I have clicked is cell A1. I will use the example of students' scores to help us see how we can enter data into a spreadsheet. When you have student data, you will normally start maybe with the names of the students and then you can have, let's say, their scores for a certain subject like English, another subject like mathematics, another subject like science, and so on and so forth. As I have been typing in the cells, to move from one cell to the next, I have been pressing the tab key on my keyboard. As I press the tab key, the active cell pointer moves to the next cell. Once you get to the last, you can press the enter key to take you to the next row, where, for instance, you can enter the details for your first student. Let's say John Doe with a score of 80 in mathematics, 70 in English, mathem sorry, English mathematics and science, 40. Enter. So, so far, we have entered the column headings, names, English, mathematics, and science. We have also entered the name of our student, John Doe. These are words which we will not be able to manipulate mathematically. So, these that are entered in a spreadsheet, which you cannot manipulate mathematically, are called labels. That brings us to the types of data that can be entered in a spreadsheet. And the first one, as I've mentioned, is labels. The second one is values. Values are numbers, dates, and other numerical data which we can manipulate mathematically. For instance, the max for English, 80 the max for mathematics 70 and the max for science 40 are values the third type third type of data that can be entered in a spreadsheet is a formula a formula is a mathematical expression that makes a relationship between several cells for instance if we were to find the total score for John Doe in the cell E2, we will need a formula. In spreadsheets, formulas must begin with the equal sign. We can have an opening bracket and then I'll express my mathematical relation between the marks for English, mathematics and science to arrive at the total. And that is an addition relation. So I'll have the cell references of the cells containing the scores of John Doe with the operator for addition. Now the English score is in cell B2 plus mathematics in cell C2 and lastly plus science is in cell D2. I can close my bracket. And when I press enter, the total score for John Doe is displayed. The fourth type of data that can be entered in a spreadsheet is a function. Just like a formula, a function establishes relationship between cells. The difference being functions are inbuilt in the spreadsheet program. In this case, Microsoft Excel has very many functions, but we shall go and look at just a few for this uh, course. For that, let us add another student, Jen Doe, and let's give her marks like 80, 90, and 70. 
The same way we would like to have the total for gen do, but in this case we would like to use a function. The relation between the scores for gen that will give us the total is a summation, addition. And so, as usual again, functions and formulas must start with equals. The function used to do addition has the, word, the name sum. We open a bracket and inside these brackets we shall give the reference for the range of cells containing the scores. The first cell is B3. We shall separate that using a colon and give the last cell which is D3. And when we close the bracket and press enter we have the total score for gen do. So those are four types of data entered in a spreadsheet. Labels like names and column headings, values which are numbers like our scores, formulas which are mathematical relations that are used to make relations between cells like the one we used for John Doe and we can see it in the formula bar and lastly functions which are inbuilt formulas like the one we used to get the total for Jen Doe and we can see it in the formula bar. Therefore we find the function of the formula bar to be a place where you can view a formula or function that you typed in a certain cell for the purpose of either editing or correcting an error that you had made. For the name box, you realize that once you click in any cell in the spreadsheet, the cell reference is shown in the name box. So that's the function of the name box to display the reference of the currently active cell. So we have just so far looked at one function, that is sum. There are much, much more functions, many, many more functions that are available in Microsoft Excel. Another function that we can apply to the data we have in our spreadsheet right now is to find the average scores for our students. I will designate column F for these results. So for John Doe, to get the average for John Doe using a function, as usual we will have to start with equal sign and the name of the function is average. We open our bracket and give the range of cells containing John Doe's scores. The first one is B2 separated by a colon and the last one is D2. When we close the bracket and press enter, the average score for John Doe is 63.33. So far we have looked at sum and average but there are many many other functions which can be found under the formulas tab in the menu ribbon and we have several categories beginning with logical which can be and, else, if and so on and so forth. We have text functions to deal with labels, date and time functions that deal with dates and time, lookup and reference, mathematics and trigonometry and many other functions.